We got the XS10 in the house. I gotta make another XS10 video because my one year anniversary uh, since owning this camera. And I wanna give you an updated um, uh, review of my thoughts having it for so long now. Having owned this camera for almost a year now, I can give you guys my honest review, my honest thoughts, uh, just how well this uh, camera holds up in 2022. Look at this, look at this sexy camera. Sexy camera, man, look at that. That's a sexy camera. With the 10 to 24, look how wide I am. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and today I want to talk about this camera, the Fujifilm X-S10. For this review, I just want to talk about the things that I like and the things that I don't like and how it held up over this past year of shooting. Now this review won't be as in-depth, so if you want to see a more in-depth review, you can watch my Fujifilm X-S10 review over here somewhere. So over this past year, I took this baby everywhere. I took a lot of travel photos. I did some client work with it. I took a lot of portraits. So there's really a mixed bag when it comes to my use cases. This camera is a workhorse. It's, it's my workhorse. I just love how inconspicuous it is and I'm ready to talk more about it. Let's start with what I love about this camera, uh, the form factor. Everything about the build quality of this camera is awesome. The size the, and the weight is a plus and the hand grip is what I really like when it comes to the externals of this camera. I just love how tiny this XS10 is and it just feels great in my hands. The hand grip that they implemented on the camera is wonderful. It feels real good to hold in my hands and it takes the same batteries, the dreaded NPWS battery. So if you guys are upgrading from something like an XT one xt2 x pro one x pro two etc something along those lines then you're in luck because those batteries will work with your xs10 you don't have to worry about shelling out more money for for batteries this camera though is not weather sealed at all although i did take this out on a shoot outside during a snowstorm let me tell you like it held up <laughs> you guys were commenting on the Facebook forums and on my videos saying how well did it hold up and stuff like that. You guys were surprised that, you know, and I was probably shooting outside for like two hours uh, with the model in the snowstorm and it held up very nice. If you guys want to see the behind the scenes snowstorm portrait session, you can watch it here somewhere. This is where I have to commend uh, Fujifilm for its uh, build quality. Although the XS10 doesn't have the weather sealing, you can rest assured knowing that it's okay to use in a snowstorm because uh, some Asian dude on YouTube went outside at nighttime in the winter during a snowstorm to take some photos for fun. I don't know why I do this. The, the risk that I take so you don't have to. Let's move on to the image quality. I love the images that I've been getting out of this camera. This sensor is the same sensor as the X-T4, so you're gonna get some high quality images from this 26 megapixel camera. I love the colors I get, I love the look I, I get, and I just love the feel and the motion and the soul I get from this camera. All I need to do is just set in my Fujifilm recipe and I'm ready to go photograph the town. To get a high quality sensor in a small package just makes sense to someone like me. Uh, the IBIS is great on this camera as well. I got as low as one over 150 15th of a second before and I still get a sharp image and I shoot low light portraits a lot so I do rely on the IBIS. Now this camera can go up to 4k 30 so if you're someone that wants to do some light video content work such as making TikToks, reels, or even like YouTube videos. This is a great starter camera as it also has the flip out tilty screen that is needed for content creators. And what is great about Fujifilm is the film simulations. These are basically just baked in presets 
coming from the camera and they are real good. I just love the film simulation so much. I become so lazy because sometimes all I do is edit uh, straight out of a camera JPEG. That's how good they are. They really look good right off the bat. And with things such as film recipes, you can, you can fine tune it and get a very stylized look. I really love the film uh, recipes uh, aspect when it comes to straight out of the camera JPEGs because they look so incredible and I recommend you guys uh, checking out FujiXWeekly.com if you guys haven't heard of them yet. But this guy R Richie, he just creates like these old uh, looks from old film stocks that he used to own. You know, I can't say for myself if it's accurate or not. It's probably close, but damn man, like it for me, it just seems like it looks like it's a shot from a film camera. So you can program your like XS10 to have like a Portra 400 film recipe look and it's all because of Fuji X Weekly and what Richie has created uh, with these film simulations which is amazing and again it's a lot better than what I can do when editing my RAWs I, I don't know what's going on in their processor the X-Trans 4 processor or anything like that but my images look so good they look so filmic and so cinematic and this is one of the competitive advantage that Fujifilm has over the other camera brands. Uh, the Fuji colors are so nice and it's one of the reasons why I won't give up on Fuji completely. I will always shoot Fuji because of their amazing colors. Let's get on with things that I don't like after almost a year of shooting. There's only two that come to mind. One is more bothersome than the other. Uh, the other is just annoying, <laughs> but it's been fixed since firmware update, but I still have to address this because it, it affected me. The first thing is the buffer. Uh, this thing is so damn annoying, man. I shoot on continuous bursts at the lowest settings, which is like, what, like five frames per second. And I have a hard time with this camera crapping out on me after like, like 20 shots to 25 to 40 shots. So once I hit my max, I will have to wait a few seconds for it to buffer and for it to read everything out. I usually wait like five seconds before shooting again. When I start to continue my burst, it just starts lagging and jamming the buffer. And then it gets to the point where it won't shoot because it's locked. And at this point, uh, nothing on this camera works. Sometimes it freezes and then I have to like switch the on and off button and sometimes the on and off button doesn't work so I have to actually remove the battery out just to like make it completely dead so there's like no electricity coming in. And this happens every time I go out and shoot. This is the one quirk one quirk that that I have to live with with this camera. I don't remember the XS10, uh, the X-T4 doing this. I think the X-T4 has like a faster processor inside or something. You guys let me know in the comments below if you have that problem because um, at this point I shoot I shoot a lot of bursts because you know with portraits you, you have the models moving around a lot so I just like to capture the right frame at the right moment so I am relying on the burst to capture capture it. I put in like a very fast memory card. I don't think the memory card has to do anything with this. I thought putting in a faster memory card would help but it doesn't. The buffer it's so freaking annoying like I have to live with this. When I whenever I show the clients the, uh, the, the photos I have to wait and sometimes I it just looks like it just looks so bad just waiting for a camera to freaking load and this is the kind of shit that makes me want to completely switch to Sony I'll do it I'll, I'll I'll completely switch I already have the video camera you don't think I'll just you don't think I can just switch out this camera? Fuji, listen, are you listening? Are you listening? <laughs> this is one negative, one quirk, and one thing that I really do not like about this camera. Does anybody else have this problem or is it just me? Like it could be because, you know, they're not putting all their flagship stuff into this camera. And that's probably one of the, the cripple hammer that they put in. If you know, let me know, but the, it was just, it's just so annoying, man. Another thing was this stupid bug I found. So. It, it, it has affected me so hard. So Paltitech already did a video on this, but if, but there is a bug in, uh, in the XS10, if you shoot over 3000 shots, your 3001 shots and up won't show on your Mac. 
if you have a Windows computer, you're fine, but I have a Mac, so you can see how frustrating this was when I came across this bug. I lost a, a lot of good shots. It's not really lost because there's a way you can fix it, and it's by the firmware update and not deleting your memory cards. But in a fit of rage, I actually formatted uh, formatted my memory cards because I thought it was something wrong with the memory cards and I thought it wasn't it didn't have to do anything with the camera so I just like cut my losses and I just like accepted that fact that I lost the photos and I didn't even want to try to get it back because it was useless I tried recovering it it didn't work this is a huge oversight on Fujifilm's part and I'm just angry that I lost a good portion of my photos because of this I don't know if this is a Fuji film issue or a Mac issue, but I'm pretty disappointed. Uh, there's nothing more I can say about that, but for you guys to just update your firmware so this won't happen to you guys. I actually posted on my social media and Fujifilm did respond to my stories, which is weird because they didn't have to do that. So they, I got like uh, a, a personal response from them or a response from them and you guys can look here i'm gonna just post it on this video so you guys can see what you have to do but yeah um i lost i lost a lot of good shots man and i i'm not gonna get that back and it's because of this stupid bug in this xs10 and i'm just very very disappointed because yeah but overall great camera <laughs>Despite the quirks and annoyance, I still like this camera. It held up nice over the year. And I didn't baby this camera around. I tossed it around in the bag. When it's inside my bag, it gets shuffled around in there. I took it to the beaches, waterfalls, tropical climates, winter storms, uh, warm places. It's, it's been mostly everywhere this past year and it's still going. It's holding up quite nice. It didn't break down and I'm happy with the build quality. I love how tiny and light this camera is. It just makes it, it makes it so easy to stow away. And for such a tiny camera, it has the same sensor as the X-T4, which is considered to be the flagship of the Fuji X camera. Uh, that means you're getting the same high-end image quality from the X-T4 for a much more affordable price coming around at um, $9.99 US dollars. You're getting such a good value out of this camera. Great images, great video, uh, and if you're a beginner and you want to start out with something decent, I recommend this camera. Hand grip is nice, the IBIS is great. I think it has everything you need to get you started and get you going on your photography journey, your video videography journey your content creation journey. Uh, there you have it, folks. Uh, this is my long-term review of the camera. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know in the comment section below. I would love to hear all you XS10 owners out there. How do you feel about this camera? Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. That's where you're gonna see more of my work at I am Tung. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Once again, my name is Tung, and I'll see you in the next video. I love you. Okay, bye. Hey Fuji, if you're listening, can I get like a refund on, you know, my time and my, my shots, please? Like I lost a lot of shots because of this bug that you have going on and I'm kind of disappointed, like really disappointed. In return, I just like, I would just like the X-H2 to play with. So if you have that going on, let me know and we'll, we'll, we'll call it square. We're square after if you let me play with the X-H2. All right, love you, Fuji.